RuneScape has a surprising number of areas that you can never visit. So why do they exist? And what secrets do they hold? Actually, quite a lot. So I broke into them. Let's just hope nobody notices I'm here. This is the Wilderness Wars Lobby, one of the very few areas in this video that you could have actually visited for about an hour in 2017 if you had a special code. So Wilderness Wars was an event ran once in 2017 at the Insomnia 61 Gaming Festival. In it, five streamers and their teams of 49 other players would face off against each other in, well, a wilderness war. The streamers were given 49 codes each that they would give to whoever they wanted on their team. Players would then redeem their code with the recruiter in Edgeville, and during the event, they'd be teleported here to gear up. It seems like after the event ended, it was stripped of all its visual assets, as well as the tables where you could get free gear, probably in case someone managed to sneak their way in. Speaking of which, we should get going. Wait, Colonello, do not leave. Oh yeah, so that recruiter from Edgeville also had a twin brother placed here, and he wasn't removed when the event ended. If my math is right, he's been sitting alone in this room for about six years now. Poor guy. Wow, uh, oh well, I miss my brother. This is an island a little northeast of Fossil Island. It's pretty close to Fossil Island, but no matter where you stand, you can't see it. Same goes for the rest of these islands. Fossil Island is actually surrounded by little islands, but you can't see or visit any of them. So why do they exist? If I had to guess, it's to make the map look a little more natural. But you know Jagex, they love their little Easter eggs and hidden references. This island is just one big reference to the the movie Castaway. There's a broken log raft, some crates, an extinguished fire, and even... Wilson! This little thing is named Wilhelm. Thankfully, I won't be here long because it looks like my ride's here. All right, looks like we've hit land. It may not look like much, but this area is one of old school's oldest mysteries. I guess you could call it one of old school's most old school mysteries. <laughs> So this area right here was added when Mod West reworked Zaya back in 2016. There's a trap door surrounded by three frozen warriors just east of the Soul Altar and a boat to the south. It's been over seven years since this area was added and still nobody knows what it does. The trap door itself is actually the same one used in the Champions Guild and the boat is Larry's from Relica. Perhaps there's some secret champion hiding down there that will get to fight one day that Larry has to bring us to? Maybe a penguin champion. But speaking of penguins, let's sail on over to our next location. If you open up your map and zoom into this little patch of ice north of Etzeteria, you'll notice it says, here be penguins, because penguins do be there. Back in November of 2004, Jagex added this island full of nothing but penguins to tease the upcoming release of an area known as the Icelands. Jagex first discussed the Icelands a few months prior in March with a news post. The post discussed the game's upcoming updates, one of which would be a large frozen lands area area, including penguins, mammoths, polar bears, and more. Although areas made up of ice did later come to the game, and many of the NPCs referenced also now exist, the ice lands themselves were never actually released. However, they are referenced in the Throne of Miscellanea quest, which was released on the same day as this penguin island. So yeah, this island's backstory is kind of sad because it's a teaser for an update that would never come. Wow, perfect timing. Let's break into a secret military base, shall we? You're probably all familiar with the drill sergeant random event. You do some push-ups, some sit-ups, and at the end, you get yourself a piece of the camo outfit. Pretty straightforward. Well, it used to be a bit more confusing. Back when this event was first released, you could actually leave this little area and explore the rest of the military base. But this was too confusing for new players, so they took the event out of the game and re-added it with the rest of the base closed off, which 
is a shame because this thing is really cool. First of all, there's no NPCs here besides the demon. It's almost eerily empty. The scenery is awesome though. There's catapults, cannons, a little guard gate, these barrel things that if RuneScape was a first person shooter would definitely explode, and my favorite, a full agility course. I think that after you unlock the full camo outfit, you should somehow unlock this agility course. Maybe next time you do the event, instead of having to do exercises on the mat, you could do a lap, earn some agility XP, all while making fun of all the people in the middle who don't have the outfit yet. I should also mention it's surrounded by an ocean of blood. How fitting. It's actually because Jagex decided to put the real blood altar right next to it for some reason. So you can actually sort of see the edges of this place whenever you're doing Guardians of the Rift. Speaking of mini games, do you remember stealing creation? I don't know about you, but that and Soul Wars were my thing back in RuneScape 2, which wow, was almost 15 years ago now. I feel old. I've always hoped that stealing creation would be ported over to old school RuneScape like Soul Wars was. It seems to come up every few months on Reddit, but there's never been enough support for Jagex to pull it. But you might be surprised to know, stealing creation is in the game right now. Or at least part of it is. So back in 2020, Jagex added the Pharaoh's Enclave to the wilderness. It's meant to be a hub for pretty much every PvP related activity in the game. From here, you can join Last Man Standing, Castle Wars, and Clan Wars. But everyone seems to forget that you can join Soul wars from here too. If you go down the stairs in the Old Knight pub and run through the cave, you'll be led to the Soul Wars portal. But that's not what makes this cave interesting. To the east of these rocks is a destroyed version of the Fist of Guthic's minigame lobby from RuneScape 2. And to the south is a tent and platform that are awfully similar to the Stealing Creation lobby. So now the question is, are these just references to Fist of Guthic's and Stealing Creation? Or does this mean that we might get them in old school one day. I guess only time will tell. Another area that may need some time before we understand it is this dungeon underneath Hosidius. It popped up back in June of 2021 when Fosani's Nightmare was added to the game permanently. Currently, there's no way to access the room, but thanks to Mod Lenny, we know that going up the ladder inside it leads to some random trees just north of the Woodcutting Guild. Now, this room obviously serves some purpose because Mod Lenny wouldn't elaborate any further on what it is, but based on how it's decorated, I'm a little scared of what its actual purpose is. But I know somewhere scarier. The Underground Pass. It's scary how annoying it is to traverse, and the plot of the quests here are pretty creepy too. For some strange reason, when the Song of the Elves quest was released, this tiny little cave was added to the pass. It's meant to be one of those areas that the player falls in whenever they fail a trap in the pass. However, there's no trap that actually leads you here. Perhaps Jagex was going to add a new trap to the pass and just change their minds? Or even more likely, they created the cave and just forgot to use it. Sort of like how some people forget to press the like button. Now, this next one actually got removed from the game fairly recently, in December of 2021, but I still want to discuss it because it might be my favorite in this video. Back when Jagex was creating the God Wars dungeon for RuneScape 2 in 2007, they had a pretty cool plan for Zamorak's base. So today, to get to Zamorak's base, you jump off this sheet of ice and swim to the other side. Instead, you were originally going to dive underwater and show up here. In under underwater cavern with sunken boats, dead Fremenix, and all sorts of other creepy stuff. Unfortunately, at some point this idea was scrapped, likely due to time constraints, but instead of deleting it, the team just left it in. I had always hoped that Jagex would one day give this area a purpose, but when they released Nex, the area was overwritten with her ancient prison. I think Nex is pretty fun, but I'll never forget what Jagex took from us. Oh, thanks. That actually reminds me of the next place I want to show you. But let's see, are we gonna get a good drop first? Nope, okay. <laughs> So this is Gorok, a long abandoned Zero settlement from the God Wars. In the lore, it was believed that this settlement was destroyed entirely, as the Gorok teleport spell takes you to the frozen waste plateau. 
But nope, whatever wizard came up with this spell must have been throwing back the wizard mind bombs because all you have to do is look a little to the west. As you could guess by the theme of this video, this area is inaccessible and currently serves no purpose. However, RuneScape 2 did get a quest that unlocked it back in 2009. So maybe someday you'll all get to explore it. For now, you'll just have to see what it looks like in this video. Mod Ash, what are you doing here? I think a better question is, what are you doing here? Nothing, nothing, I was just... Goodbye. Well, I figured that would happen eventually. At least this next spot is pretty close by. Just north of the tortoise pen in the gnome stronghold is an empty pen. It looks like nothing special, but the backstory behind it is awesome. So back when Old School first started, Mod Matt K would do live streams on Twitch. He'd show off Jmod tools, start huge wilderness wars, and other fun activities. Eventually, he started a series where he'd do a thousand of something, like open a thousand medium clue caskets or kill 1,000 and Calphite Queens. But so the stream didn't last days, he would spawn everything in. North of the Gnome Stronghold was where he would spawn in the bosses he'd kill, so players could get up close and watch. That was until the incident that led to the creation of this pen. This incident was so bad that I made an entire video about it, as well as all the other insane stuff Old School's team used to get away with. So check that video out over on the right hand side of the screen if that sounds interesting. 